Welcome to the lecture Core Build-Ups with the Luxor Core family. In order to explain to you the material properties and the handling, I would like to invite you to a cave dive. A dive into the deep of the root canal cave. Before we start, let's have a look at our agenda. First of all, I want to give you some basic information about endodontics. Then we, I will present you the Luxacore family. Luxapose, Luxacore Z and Luxabond. Last but not least, I invite you to join a core build-up journey. Teeth are not lifeless bodies sticking in our mouth. No, they are much more. Like the liver or the kidneys, they are organs, little organs. Teeth are supplied with blood from the cardiovascular system. Arterias come in with oxygenated blood and essential nutrients. Veins transport the blood out of the tooth back to the cardiovascular system. Nerves are coming from the central nervous system, making the tooth sensitive to warm, cold and pressure. Teeth are very tactile organs. The mouth opening reflex protects the tooth against unexpected bite forces. Teeth even have their own immune system with lymphatic vessels. The inside of the tooth where all these soft tissue, the so-called pulp tissue, comes together through the root canals access is called the pulp chamber. On the surface of the crown you can see the rigid crystalline animal, the hardest substance in the human body. Beneath you have the more organic, softer and more flexible dentin. The crown is looking out of the pink gingiva here and is embedded in the bone with roots by many elastic fibers, the so-called Sharpay's fibers. All fibers together are called periodontium. The periodontium and the flexibility of the dentin are the natural buffer of the tooth, avoiding overload and fractures. Sharks have so-called revolver teeth. Behind the actual teeth in the front you have always seven rows of rootless teeth which are in different development stages. They don't stand upright, they are lying down. In the development process the rootless teeth will come up more and more vertical until they replace the front tooth. This is necessary because shark teeth break very often because of the enormous bite force. But sharks have the possibility of tooth replacement. What is essential for a shark to survive? This is not the case with human teeth. We have our secondary teeth for the rest of our life. But sadly, they can be destroyed by caries or accidents. That's why we need intelligent dental materials to recreate and replace lost tooth substance. This is the enemy number one of the human teeth. Bacteria especially when bacteria have the possibility to organize themselves, they metabolize sugar into acid. Organized bacteria are called active biofilm. They live protected in the plug matrix. Today we know that metabolic processes and communication is enabled with gaps in this matrix. You find division of labor there. Some are responsible for the bonding to the tooth. Others organize food for the community. The goal is to survive. Here you can see the final result of the bacteria's work. The produced acid has first passed the animal layer in the proximal only and is dot shaped. Then the dentin, which is not as resistant as the animal, was destroyed under the remaining animal layer. Everything still looks nice. But the undermined area in the dentin gets bigger and bigger until the animal layer caves in. Here you can see the cavity. But what is the problem? On the one hand, the tooth is very destabilized and can break totally. On the other hand, the bacteria can now infect the soft tissue in the pulp chamber, the root canal and the bone beneath. Tooth pain can be the result. The infected soft tissue is swollen. Inflammation gases cause pressure. 
So now you have to stabilize, to seal and to disinfect the inner tooth. I will demonstrate this with a clinical case. So here you can see an irreversible infected tooth clinically. The mesial caries has been excavated, so to say removed with a burr and a rubber dam is placed. The rubber dam is very important for endodontic treatments. It provides a dry working field, a good visibility and avoids reinfection. Gingiva and mouth are protected from the disinfection chemicals. Instruments cannot be aspirated. A provisional filling is left as a placeholder over the pulp chamber. This is to gain access to the root canal. The cementum can be removed easily. The adhesive technique which stabilizes and seals the tooth in the following procedure would otherwise block the access to the pulp chamber and the root canals. An adhesive wall is created with composite with the help of a matrix. The tooth is completely sealed and stabilized now. But the infection of the inner tooth and its soft tissue is still there. What do we do now? To avoid pain for the patient caused by the pressure of the swollen soft tissue and the inflammation gases in the perfectly sealed tooth, we have to open the tooth with a burr. This is called trepanation. Gases are released and you have access to the pulp chamber and the root canals. The inner tooth, the so-called endodont, has to be cleaned now. The soft tissue has to be removed and the chamber has to be disinfected. After the trepanation, you can see blood coming out of the root canals. This is an obvious sign for an acutely and irreversibly infected soft tissue called pulpitis. The next step is the disinfection and the organic dissolution. Sodium hypochlorite is used for that. You do the treatment in a sodium hypochlorite swimming pool. First you fill the sealed inner tooth and the root canals as far as possible with the aggressive disinfection solution. Then the root canal preparation is performed with these little endodontic hand files in the tooth swimming pool filled with sodium hypochlorite. The wetness makes it easier to work. You have a better lubrication for the files. With the preparation in the root canal, you can automatically do a disinfection. Step by step, you have to reach now the whole root canal to the apex, cleaning and disinfecting the inner tooth. Here you can see the removal of the soft tissue in the root canal, which is called extirpation. You start with a thin hand file from the root canal axis and perform your root canal preparation stepwise with picking movements to the apex, the end of the root canal. This is necrotic pulp tissue which was removed in one piece with a hand file. The infection with bacteria devitalized the whole soft tissue. In such cases you have no bleeding from the root canal. The whole soft tissue in the inner tooth is, so to say, already dead. After the soft tissue has been removed, bleeding has stopped. The canal access is now visible. The root canal is filled with the medicamentous inlay calcium hydroxide. It is a long-lasting antibacterial paste killing a wide range of bacteria. You can see the applied medication here, white in a singular root canal of a premolar. The tooth is then provisionally covered with cement. This provisional filling can be removed very easily, even with an ultrasonic tip. A sponge can also be placed underneath to facilitate easier access for the final treatment. Occlusion was checked carefully to avoid interferences as an additional pain stimulus. In the next treatment session, the rest of the infected soft tissue is removed with endodontic files. For the procedure, you can use also hand files. Modern endodontics 
is performed with a mechanical preparation using very flexible rotating nickel titanium files. The length of the root canal is measured electronically or radiographically. Again, the prepared and mechanically enlarged root canal is disinfected and the organic tissue is dissolved with sodium hypochloride. But it is not possible to remove all bacteria in the inner tooth. That's why a root filling is finally performed. The living environment of the bacteria is taken with the filler gutta percha. These are conical caoutchouc points in different sizes. Here you can see a modern thermoplastic filler. The gutta percha point is warmed up in an oven for three-dimensional filling. The vertical filler is then inserted into the root canal with antibacterial cement, the sealer. The goal is to seal the root canal to the bone underneath like a stopper to avoid reinfections and an uncontrolled increase of bacteria in the body. This is how a filled root canal looks like on the x-ray. Sealer and gutta percha points are radiopaque and are clearly distinguishable. This is the last control if the whole root canal has been treated efficiently. Cave diving is the most challenging diving discipline. This is the same with the root canal treatment in dentistry. It is very hard work to find the tiny root canal axis, to bring the endodontic file to the apex over the whole root canal length and to fill that hidden and small space properly. In addition, root canals can be very curved, very long and very tight. Due to that, you have to be well prepared to succeed your cave dive adventure into the deep of the root canal. You need equipment you can rely on. The material has to be approved and the components have to work together harmoniously. You have to trust in your equipment for a secure feeling during the dive. You need experience with the handling of your equipment. You never dive alone, especially regarding to the root canal cave. It is important to have trustable dive partners. You need associates that know each other speechless and enable a safe and successful cave dive into the root canal. You need an exact plan, a clear concept what to do before you dive into the root canal cave. Especially for the complicated caves you have to be very well trained. Otherwise you prefer to stay in front and don't like to enter. But when you have a plan tailored and well-known equipment, nice partners and the sensitivity for root canals in your fingertips, it will be a great dive. The Luxacore family is your dive partner into the root canal. Luxapose, Luxacore Z and Luxabon are the right fellowship for successful dives in root canal caves where nobody else has been before. In the next chapter, I will present you the Luxapose to enhance the retention of our core buildup on endodontically treated teeth. Thank you. Welcome to Luxapose. Many people might think, what is so special about this boxfish? Does he only look funny? No. Scientists found out that this fish has a very aerodynamic shape. This is a patent from nature and the good thing is it has been evolutionary improved over millions of years. That was the reason why a well-known car producer transferred the shape of the boxfish to the body of a car. The aim was to make the car more aerodynamic and to reduce the gas consumption of the car. The patent of nature worked out very well and the car did 100 kilometers with about 4 liters in 2005. When we want to restore a tooth with a core built up and a full crown, the aim should be to imitate mother nature. In the dental case, dentin should be imitated as closely as possible. Dentin consists out of 
20% water, 50% strong amorphous hydroxyl apatite. Amorphous means that it has an irregular arrangement in the dentin, not the regular crystalline appearance as in the animal. The rest are 30% elastic collagen fibers consisting of proteins, giving the internal flexibility to the tooth to compensate bite forces. The construction plan, the arrangement of the dentin, is responsible for the specific material characteristics. An intelligent core build-up system should simulate two properties for a harmonious integration in the dentin. First, the flexibility to avoid stress and fractures between the core build-up material and the dentin. Second, the cutability to ensure an even and controlled preparation. Adhesive systems have reached a very high performance standard, but when a tooth is severely destroyed, it can still be necessary to stabilize a core build-up with a retentive post. For these cases, DMG developed the Luxapost system, including a glass fiber reinforced composite post and a bird to perform the preparation for the root canal. This is the Luxa post, a reinforced composite post with unidirectional glass fibers for a good flexural strength. The transparent post is suitable for highly aesthetic full ceramic restorations and has a substance saving tapered form imitating the root canal shape. You find two macro retentions on the head of the post. These undercuts offer grip to the composite core build-up materials in the coronal part. In generally, it is a passive post without any active forces or friction to the root canal walls, avoiding fractures. The post is available in the diameters 1.25, 1.375 and 1.5. A fishing rod has to be flexible to compensate the forces of a fish. Otherwise, it would break or the rod would be ripped out of the hand when a really big fish is caught. Our Luxa post is also flexible to avoid root fractures. It will compensate bite forces similar to dentin. Here on this graph, the flexural modulus of different posts compared to the dentin structure is documented. The flexural modulus can be seen as the initial part of the bending fracture data. It documents how much a material can flex before breaking. The flexural modulus is a statement for the flexibility or rigidity of a material. On this graph, you can see that the low flexural modulus of our reinforced glass fiber composite post is really similar to dentin. Due to that, the harmonized flexibility of the post and the dentin avoids stress peaks and fractures. The finite element simulation shows the stress distribution under bite forces with three scenarios. The first one is a natural tooth, the second one a tooth with a glass fiber post and the third one a tooth with a metal post. The tooth with the glass fiber post shows nearly the same effects as the natural tooth. The post and the residual tooth structure harmonizes when forces are applied. Glass fiber post and natural teeth compensate bite forces with a similar stress distribution. Due to that, stress peaks are minimized, avoiding root fractures. However, the scenario with the metal post shows a different stress distribution pattern and bigger stress peaks, especially in the delicate apical area, which can cause root fractures. Here you can see a little fish. He's hiding in a hole. The hole is perfect for the fish. He feels safe because he fits really very well in there. But he's not sticking to the hole. There is no friction. Otherwise, he would be caught in the hole. There is still a tiny space between the cave walls and his body. That's how a post should fit into a root canal. The post should be placed without friction to avoid forces to the root which might cause fractures. On the other hand, the post should not have too much space 
because the cement layer should only have 50 200 micrometers to avoid breaking off the cement material. Here you can see the perfect match between the Luxa post and the Luxa post burr. The burr fits exactly to the tapered form and size of the Luxa post. The slightly bigger burr leaves automatically a tiny space for the cement layer from 50 to 100 micrometers. This avoids a cement layer which is too thick and might break more easily. Because of the excellent cutting abilities, there is only one drill and no pre-shaping drills necessary. Every burr can be used for about 10 posts. Which canal when is an important question. The post should be placed when two or more walls of the tooth are missing. If the wall thickness after preparation is less than one millimeter. If there is no ferrule effect, there should be at least two millimeters left of the vertical tooth substance to offer enough retention and force distribution for the crown. A white lumen automatically causes a thick cement layer, which is not preferable as we heard. The space for the cement should not be bigger than 50 to 100 micrometers. The same is true for canals with an oval lumen. Here you can see a tooth with three missing cavity walls and an insufficient ferrule effect. This is an obvious indication for a post insertion. Here you can see different root canal shapes. The palatal root canal on the right side is not preferable because of the big size. The cement layer will be automatically too big. The same is true for the oval mesiobuccally canal here on the left upper side. An important question for the clinician is which post is the strongest. So when you take different posts and try to break them, it will be clear what happens. Metal and zirconium posts will be much stronger than a glass fiber post. But this is not the real clinical situation. In this case, the post is embedded in the core build-up material. CRA is a very well-known independent testing institute in the USA you can rely on. In one of their newsletters, they focus on this topic. The result. In this graph, we can see the strength of different posts embedded cemented with a core built up material and we see there are no statistically significant differences between the strength of a metal, titanium, a carbon, a zirconium and a glass fiber post. Another question which is discussed very intensively is how deep the post should be placed. Some say in the first third, some say in the second third and some say as deeply as possible. So what is true? Also, the CRA gave the answer. One half of the bony supported length of the root is enough. When you go deeper, you won't have more retention and you weaken the tooth without any need. Here you can see the try-in of a post. The dentist is checking if he is deep enough. The bone level is here, the post ends here and the root canal here. So this is deep enough. Measurements are very important when you work in a root canal. You want to treat the whole length of the root canal but avoid going too deep in the bony area. The post should have the right seating depth. To have a repeatable measurement it is necessary to choose reference points on the residual tooth structure. This can be the marginal border as you can see here the cusp tip or the cavity margin to assure you always work with a measured length. The visibility of the post on the x-ray, the so-called radiopacity, is also relevant. The right location of the post can only be checked with radiographic diagnostics. The dentist can see if the post has to be placed deeper or if he is already preparing too deep or in the wrong direction. 
As a forensic aspect, health insurances sometimes want to see the pre-prosthetic work before they allow restorations to be done. To see the post clearly on the x-ray is a must for diagnostics. Therefore, the radiopacity of the post has to be higher than the radiopacity of the surrounding heart tissue, the dentin and the enamel, to be able to differentiate. Here on this graph you can see the radiopacity of the dentin, the enamel and the luxa post. You can see that the radiopacity of the post has 475%, more than twice than enamel. Luxa post has a macroretentive undercut in the coronal part for mechanical retention to the core build-up material, for an additional chemical adhesion of the reinforced composite glass fiber post to the composite cement, you need a chemical linker. As you can see, this diving family stops for decompression to breathe off the nitrogen. They have one hand on the rope and the other hand free and ready to grab something. This is how the linker works. It is chemically connected to the surface of the post and grabs chemically into the molecular structure of the composite cement when they get in touch. DMG offers a two-bottle xylenization system for full ceramic restorations. The clue of the Luxa post is that it is pre-xylenized, so you can skip one work step and use the post directly out of the box. As you can see on this graph, you need much more force to pull out a xylenized post you get 33% more bonding strength, which is really significant. The Luxa post is pre-silenized for a better adhesion to the composite cement. To sum up, Luxa post is a good choice because of the similar flexural modulus like natural dentin, avoiding stress peaks and fractures. The high radiopacity for a precise visibility. The translucency, which enables high aesthetics under full ceramic restorations. The pre silenized surface for more bonding strength between the post and the composite cement. The perfect match with the bird, creating automatically the space for a thin cement layer. In the next chapter, I will present you the post cementation and core build up procedure with Luxacore Z. Thank you. Welcome to Luxacore Z. This is Luxacore Z, our premium core build up material. But why is it a premium product? The word nano comes from the Greek word nanos and means dwarf. Now we know that we deal here with really small particles fabricated out of zirconium dioxide, a biocompatible, high-performance ceramic material. These particles are milled to a size of 1 to 100 nanometers, which is a millionth millimeter. In Luxacore Z, these nanoparticles are embedded in the resin matrix for premium material properties. DMG has invented a new procedure to have real nanoparticles separated from each other in the resin matrix. On the left picture you can see a very even distribution of the DMG nanoparticles. In the silica gel on the right picture there are also nanoparticles if you only take the particle size into consideration. But in this agglomerated clusters the particles cannot behave as real nanoparticles should do. So we do not have the desired product features and effects with special premium material characteristics there. The separated DMG nanoparticles don't lose their significant properties. The particles are safely and evenly embedded in the resin matrix and cannot diffuse anywhere. With Luxacore, we used to say it cuts like dentin, but with the new Luxacore Z, we can really say it cuts as dentin. You can see that the cutability shows really the same value. But why is this so important? 
Just imagine the scenario going with a burr with the same force through this oyster shell. The burr will cut constantly with 40,000 cycles per minute. The shell here consists of different materials. You'll go very fast through the soft tissue of the oyster as if you go through butter. When you hit the shell it will be much harder for the burr and it will go slower through the material. And the pearl in the middle will be really a challenge. All the tissues here have a different cutting behavior. You don't want to have that instability during the preparation. What you need is tactile stability. When the core build up is harder to cut than dentin, you will produce undercuts. If the material is easier to cut, you will have a conical outcome, which is not good for friction and retention of the crown. You will only have a great performance when the cutability of the core build-up and the dentin is the same. Only when you have the real dentin feeling, the preparation will be fully under the dentist's control. You need tactile stability and guidance. With Luxacor Z, you don't feel a difference on the interface between the dentin and the core build up material during the preparation. The preparation is not an uncontrolled rodeo ride anymore. The dentist can concentrate on the important things. He can take care of the preparation margins. He can prepare without grooves and undercuts. He can concentrate on the insertion direction. He is able to create a precise base for the technician's work. Visible contrasts are also important during the preparation. The dentist always wants to differentiate between the origin tooth structure and the core build-up material. Luxacor Z is available in blue and bleach for good contrasts and in A3 for the aesthetic full ceramic restoration. Luxacor Z can flow easily in every undercut of the coronal core build up and in every tiny space of the root canal. It can create easily a cement layer which is thinner than 25 micrometers. And the layer thickness is crucial for root cements. Here on this graph you can see that Luxacor is below the maximum for precision cements, which the norm says is 25 micrometers. This is very comfortable for the dentist. He can insert the post very easily. As we heard, the space of the cement layer should not be more than 50 to 100 micrometers to avoid breaking off. This is an easy job for Luxacor Z. This sea anemone sways with the current. The dentin and the post should react similar to bite forces. On this graph we can see that the flexural modulus of Luxacor Z and Luxapost are very similar, really close to the one for dentin. So these components harmonize with each other compensating bite forces with a similar flexibility and stress distribution. This avoids stress peaks and root fractures. Luxacor Z is perfect for two jobs. On the one hand, it is perfectly suitable for the post cementation. On the other hand, you can perform a core build up in the coronal part. Luxacor Z is post cement and core build up in one for an easy workflow. Just place a matrix and continue filling up with the same material right after post cementation. It is dentin out of a cartridge. To sum up, Luxacor Z is a good choice because it cuts as dentin for precise preparations. It has a similar flexibility like dentin and the Luxapost avoiding stress peaks and fractures. It is perfectly suitable for two jobs, generating an easy workflow. It enables a thin layer thickness of 20 micrometers which is even 5 micrometers lower than the recommended for a precision cement. In the next chapter, I will present you the bonding procedure for core build-ups with Luxabond. Thank you. Welcome to Luxabond.
The best core build up system is senseless when it is not bonded reliably to the residual tooth structure. Alexa Bond is an edge and rinse system. It is a dual light and self curing adhesive system which is very rare on the market. When you want to bond in the root canal, self curing is very essential because light curing deep down there is not a safe procedure. The light can't reach the deep parts properly. Laxabon is a universal three bottle adhesive system for every situation in dentistry and a real specialist for root canals. On this graph you can see dual curing adhesive systems. You can see in the middle that two and even three bottle systems not really reach a very high bond strength. Four bottle systems on the right side have a good bond strength but are complicated and time consuming. DMG offers a three bottle system with an easy and fast workflow. Apart from that, the bond strength is twice as much as recommended by CRA and similar to the four bottle systems. The first bottle contains pre-bond, which is a clear liquid. But what is so special about this pre-bond? Pre-bond is a polymerization activator. It is massaged in the dentin structures of the root canal and the coronal cavity for 15 seconds with a brush. Prebond has now enough time to disperse into the dentin structures. The timing is very relaxed with prebond because the prebond is waiting very patiently for the self curing process with its partners, Luxabond A and B, in the root canal and the cavity. In a second step, Luxabond A and B are mixed together in a one to one ratio. One or two drops from each bottle are enough. The yellow bonding is mixed for five seconds with a new endodontic brush on a mixing plate. It is worked into the root canal and the cavity for 20 seconds with a brush. When pre-bond as a polymerization actuator and Luxabond A and B meet in the root canal and the cavity, the self-curing process is starting. With the optimized shaped endo brush of the Luxabond system, the dentist has no problem to reach the root canal properly. The endo brush fits exactly into the root canal and makes the dentist work efficiently and reliable. To sum up, Luxabond is a good choice because it is universal for every bonding procedure light curing, dual curing and the most important thing for the root canal, self curing. Because the bond strength is as high as recommended achievable here with a three bottle system for an uncomplicated and reliable workflow. In the next chapter we will have a core build up journey together, diving into the deep of the root canal cave. Thank you. Welcome to our journey into the root canal cave. Let's have an adventure together. You can see everybody on board is in a good mood. The dive partners come along well with each other. The journey to the cave dive begins. Microscope or magnifying loops are directly over the cave now. Concentration and let's go into the root canal. First, the root canal preparation is performed with the Luxapost burr. Immediately, you can see Gutapercha coming out of our cave. Cleaning is performed and checked carefully. You don't want to have any caoutchouc or cement residues on the canal walls preventing the adhesive bonding procedure. The enamel is etched for 20 to 60 seconds, the dentin for only 15 seconds. So always start the etching procedure on the enamel. Rinsing is performed carefully to remove the phosphoric acid totally. The dentist has now time to dry the root canal until a moist film is left avoiding pooling. The water is here removed with paper points. 
but the dentin should not be dried out totally. To create a humid film, the brush and tissue technique offers a predictable outcome. The dry brush is inserted in the root canal and then step by step checked on a tissue if here is still excess water. The brush is dried out totally again on the tissue before the procedure is repeated. If there is no humidity left on the tissue, you can go on with the bonding procedure. Pre-bond is worked into the tooth substance for 15 seconds. The solvent is vaporized with gentle air. The excess is removed here with paper points. Again, the brush and tissue technique would be more predictable here for the recommended humid film. One or two drops of bond A and B are mixed in a one-to-one -one ratio for five seconds on a mixing plate. A new brush is used. The bond mixture is worked into the tooth substance for 20 seconds. The excess is here removed with paper points. To ensure the correct moisture content, again the brush and tissue technique is recommended. Luxacor Z is applied onto the post and into the root canal with a special endo tip. When the material gets in touch with a polymerization activator pre-bond, the polymerization process is starting. That's why you have 20 seconds for the cementation procedure. This is really enough time when you are prepared. Don't use a lantulo for the cement application in the root canal. The polymerization reaction will even go faster when you mix the already activated Luxacore Z in the matrix. For a secure and simple application, DMG invented these comfortable shaped endo tips for the smart mix and outer mix system. With these tailored tips, you can reach the canal ground very easily. After the insertion of Luxapost, the simultaneous filling of the coronal part can be performed in one procedure. Here light curing takes place directly after the post cementation. Then the core build up is created in a second step. Finally, the preparation is performed for a full crown. Post shortening should be realized before cementation with a rotating disc. The vibrations caused by the burr can loosen the fresh bonding adhesion. Here you can see the ideal preparation for a full crown. The ferrule effect with 2 mm residual tooth structure in the vertical is accomplished. Laminated cards give clear advices during the procedure and support an easy workflow. The result is the so-called monoblock. You have used here only a small number of harmonizing materials with similar mechanical properties. Stress is reduced when the original, the natural tooth structure is simulated. This enables a long-lasting core build-up you can rely on. With the Luxacore family, you have team spirit and partnership in the deep. You have a tailored, reliable core build-up system for predictable dives into the root canal cave. So, this is the end of our cave dive into the root canal. Thank you for your attention.